Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Good to see you again. And I know it's been a while since I've made a video, but what better way to come back than the second anniversary event that is happening for the One Piece card game? I'm very excited for this. This is going to be on December 6th and on. And there's a couple of things that I've been seeing, uh, you know, different people talking about, you know, how this is. Uh, tournament is formatted and I kind of want to go over exactly how it's formatted what you should be looking for you know what you might want to bring and um, you know some special cards that are going to be an OP09 that will really help you win these events so uh, without further ado these do start on December 6th which is this upcoming Friday this is going to be like a pre-release event um, I did see some conflicting info about, you know, some people believing that it was strictly just a Rainbow Luffy sealed event. I don't believe that's the case. Um, I'm not entirely 100% sure on that fact, but it does seem that on their website, they have been very clear in stating that it is basically up to the organizers, you know, the card shops that you will be going to to attend these tournaments. It's their discretion of whether they would prefer to do a sealed, constructed, or the sealed with the Rainbow Luffy format. Now, uh, going into you know this event as a whole, uh, the participation for this event is going to be that Luffy promo that we've seen kind of fluctuating around different events, whether that was, um, I want to say it was Gen Con that they had it, and like a couple other events, uh, as well as it was a promo at... Uh, there's another event that I'm not remembering off the top of my head, but this is going to be easily the most accessible way to get this card. I actually don't even have this card yet, so I think it'll be really cool. Um, I'm excited to get my hands on one of them, and I would like to have a playset eventually. I think the card just looks awesome, so I'm stoked to pick up the, the promo Luffy. Uh, but you're also going to get, and to my knowledge, I believe it's only one pack. Could be two. Uh, I think that's also going to be up to the stores, but I believe that the uh, requirement of the tournament is just one pack, but it could be two depending on one, how many tournament packs they get, how many players entered, so they could have extras to give away. I'm not quite sure, but uh, this is going to have two cards inside of it. It's from 75 different types of cards. It's yet again, just all the commons and uncommons in uh, OP09. So you could get some really interesting cards here. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are actually really looking to pick up some of these anniversary stamped cards for, let's say, per say the Blackbeard deck. It's a deck that doesn't really take that much to alt out uh, besides, <laughs> besides Laboon. Good luck getting Laboons if you don't have them, uh, those alt arts and even the regulars, geez. Uh, but yeah, these these are gonna be really nice. I think they'll be really sought after. Um, so whatever you get in there, be sure to you know keep close, uh, keep a close eye on those cards. We also have the Dawn uh, that's gonna be stamped with that second anniversary uh, golden stamp on there. That's the same stamp that will be on that middle pack right there, the participation uh, tournament pack. I think these, this is great. I love the participation already. It just feels like going to these, uh, this event is going to be fun. Getting your hands on some OP09 packs, hopefully, by the way. Um, I know that some stores won't get their OP09 in time for this, so it might be using older sets, uh, depending, or they might delay the events. So that's worth keeping in mind as well. But the winner of the event, the sole winner of the event, is going to get a play set, not one, not two, but a playset, all of them. <laughs> all three brothers from the Starter Deck 13, every leader. The Ace, Luffy, and Sabo leaders. I mean, these look incredible. They've got the second anniversary stamp on there. I think these cards are going to be some money. I mean, obviously, BY Luffy is going to be up there as far as, uh, you know, people really looking to get their hands on that card. Um, Ace and Sabo, though, really really good leaders that just haven't yet have like had the perfect pieces to make their deck exactly what you're looking for 
but I think that they're very, very strong leaders, especially for the future of the game as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is just a great chance and a great opportunity to potentially get your hands on some pretty sick winner cards right here. Uh, but as far as the format of the tournament, that is where it's going to be up to your card shop, right? Is it going to be sealed? Is it going to be constructed? Now, if you don't know what that means, uh, constructed is where you bring your own deck of 50 cards and everybody plays their already pre-constructed decks and winner takes all. The sealed format is where they give you six packs for the participation. You open up those exact six packs, right? And in those, you construct a deck of 40 cards. Now, it doesn't matter about the, car the color type, anything. You can add any card from those packs into uh, your deck. And, but with the sealed format uh, comes a very important question. What leader do you bring or what leader is used, right? Uh, some shops are a little different. Some might be using in the very top left over there, uh, the Rainbow Luffy, right? Oh, you know what? I actually realized that the five, I, I apparently moved the five incorrectly. Uh, I did not put it over the life after I moved the card. But uh, it does say it's a four life leader. It's not supposed to be a five. That's why there's a five there <laughs> to correct it. Uh, it was a misprint, but that was just the only image I could find that was good quality. Um, but yeah, the Rainbow Luffy is something that could be used. I don't know if that's going to be passed out to, to every player in this event like they did the previous one. Um, it could. It could be. But uh, I don't expect them to go, hey, you need to be bringing this leader because if you don't have it, then you can't play. They wouldn't, they wouldn't require that, you know, they want people to just be able to show up and get all the necessary tools to be able to play the tournament. So with that in mind, um, it might be reasonable to bring an already existing leader uh, to have prepared for this event. And for sealed events, um, obviously, uh, we've seen since Bonnie came out in OPO7, Bonnie was very, very strong in, you know, sealed format and in those pre-release events. So I think that Bonnie's a really good opportunity to do well in some of the uh, some of the games that you'll be playing in the second anniversary event. I also think that Shanks is a very interesting idea. Uh, you know, with how little 2Ks you're able to normally get out of six packs, Shanks is really nice because whenever they swing six, it's now five. And that makes it very, very relevant to you know, Shanks wanting to, um, you know, protect himself, maybe not have to use a 2k every single time. Um, especially when there's a five coming at you, you can just subtract it by one and you don't have to lose a card in hand. Um, but it stops a swing completely. And that might just be the case with how dawn efficient your opponent might try to be during a turn. Um, there's also Usus Captain Kid, the pre-release goat for the longest time. Uh, Usus Kid is a phenomenal leader. It's exceptional into you know pretty much every sealed format. Um, but I won't lie, Bonnie is uh, Bonnie's really. It's kind of a toss-up for me. Like which one of these is better? I personally have been enjoying Bonnie quite a bit <clears throat> in uh, pre-release and sealed formats, just because getting rid of one swing or getting rid of a blocker whenever i really need to uh is really detrimental normally to my my opponent's um you know attempt at going for game or attempt at removing my board so very very strong leader card right there uh but then i also put yamato yamato is really good because of the double attack and being able to get two rested dawn onto one of your characters uh, the tough part about Yamato, and we're going to go over all the cards here shortly, is that Yamato is very dependent on your opponent not always having a blocker on the board because blocker basically just kind of disables Yamato's effectiveness. And you're also playing a life down, which makes it a little tricky. Um, and there are a lot of blockers in OP09 that we're about to go over, some of which good luck even getting over <laughs> and being able to swing over. So... Um, yeah, this is, uh, this, these are the leaders I would recommend though, if you are going into sealed, there's obviously plenty more leaders that you could potentially use. I just think these tend to be, you know, really good. Shanks is just really interesting as well. I think it's one that's from the new set that could actually do pretty well. 
Um, but without further ado, let's go into all the cards that we need to be looking at and keep our eyes out for this event. All right, so there's a lot of cards in OP09, you know, and in these events, you can get any of these cards out of your packs. So it's important to go over all of them, but a lot of them are, you know, very straightforward. So I'm just going to kind of skim through um, the vast majority of them, but there are a few that I do kind of want to point out because they're going to be extremely useful. But uh, Uta, as far as Uta is concerned, you know, on play, look at your top five, find a red head, uh, red haired pirates card. Uh, searcher, I don't really see this really being used because you would have to get very convenient cards out of your, you know, packs um, to find a consistent uh, usefulness for this card. Uh, but we have Shachi and Penguin. This is a phenomenal card for this event. This is a 4-5, 1k counter. When attacking, give an opponent's character minus 2,000 for the turn. That is so solid uh, for not only presenting a threat on the board, but being able to remove your opponent's board at the same time. Very, very strong card, very powerful. So this common that you more than likely will find throughout your six packs definitely needs to be an addition into the deck. Um, pretty much any super rare that you're going to find in this set is going to be very useful in some way, shape, or form. I think there's one that's not really, but uh, Shanks is a no-brainer, a 10-cost card with Rush and giving everything minus 1,000 power. Insane. So don't really need to say much about that card. That's really, really good if you pick this up. We also have Silver's Rayleigh. Uh, it's a blocker, so that's what you want it for. The stat line's also really good. Um, the on-play effect is it has potential um you know there's a there's a chance your opponent's going to have five, uh, five two five thousand power or more characters on the board and you get to draw two and discard one so this is a super super solid uh blocker to have in the deck if you do find this definitely add it to the list uh vanilla cards are actually really solid in these events so i think a five seven like this is perfect um there are some like I usually typically like to go with four sixes, usually or three fives for vanillas, but uh, the five seven here is still going to be very powerful. It's very tough for your opponent to get rid of, so very strong card as well. Um, we also have heat, another blocker, which is fantastic, and then give a uh, give up to one of your power four thousand or lower leaders plus one thousand power for the turn. Yeah, that's not really a thing uh for us because we won't have a 4000 or lower leader um but it is you know it's something that like, as far as like a blocker is concerned we we're always going to add this to the deck as well and being a common should be very easy to find uh building snake is actually really solid this is a one cost uh 2000 power no counter but it is essentially gordon where you can bottom deck the card and then give an opponent's character minus 3,000 power. So it's a very strong early game play. And then even later in the game, drawing into the card, it might seem like a dead card. But for one Dawn, being able to probably just remove something off of your opponent's board very easily is extremely solid. So very, very useful right there. Ben Beckman in trashing a, an opponent's character with a 6,000 power or less, 1k counter, and a 7-7 seven, seven stat line. Super super good obviously like i said the super rares are going to be added so this is just a no-brainer and then we've got bonk punch uh play up a monster play a monster card from your hand and then when attacking this character gains plus 2000 it's a good stat line i don't think the on play is realistically going to be used but it could it could um, I don't really see, I don't think you should be putting this in the deck for that combination as much as you should for the, uh, Dawn X1 when attacking, um, making it an 8k swing, which is very powerful, very, very powerful. So, um, pretty solid addition as well. Uh, Hongo, the 2k counter, don't even care about the rest of the card, 2k counter. That's all that matters. We want it. 2k counter. We're putting every single 2k counter that we pull out of our six packs in the deck. So that is definitely an addition. Uh, here's the monster card. Uh, if your character Bok Punch would be KO'd by any effect, you can instead send this character to the trash. I mean, you can run it. 
you could run it. But like I said, you know, I would prioritize other more important cards. You're not really thinking of using that Bonk Punch or uh, excuse me, Bonk Punch uh, for the on play effect as much as you are for the when attacking. So it's fine. You can play it if you want. Um, Yasop is really solid, though. On play, giving your leader plus 1,000 till the end of your opponent's next turn. Making your leader a 6k, and then when attacking, give something minus 1,000. Another character minus 1,000 is phenomenal. Very, very good card. This is going to be extremely useful in getting rid of your opponent's board, but simultaneously keeping your board strong. So Yasop is a definite, definite addition to the deck. <clears throat> lime juice 2k counter we take those and the on play is like potentially useful there are a couple of blockers that are below the 5k stat line so it does have a potentially useful on play um just being able to go for game but yeah uh i would say more 2k counter than anything but uh still super solid addition uh we got lucky rue nice blocker and extremely extremely good too uh if you are happening or if you do happen to be running shanks as your leader um this on ko really just allows you to ko a 6k or less which is amazing i mean doing two jobs for one you know we can't really get better than that so if you see yourself maybe picking up a few of these it might be worthwhile considering playing shanks as your leader uh, you could get lucky and get a couple as your it's a rare card so you know it might be tough to get a, more than two in your six packs but i've seen i've seen crazier things it's also a good stat line and the blocker of course uh four six vanilla i think these are you know these are great additions if you you know can find the space usually speaking you do have space for at least like three to four vanillas that are just really nice for on curve um we also have wire here 2k counter that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, yeah, so 2k counter right there. And then we've got Get Lost, which is KO up to two of your opponent's characters with a combined power of 4,000 or less. For three Dawn, seems a little much, so I don't know if I would go as far as keeping this in there. I would maybe prioritize more of like the counter cards that uh, I want to leave Dawn up for to protect myself or my board. Uh, we also have the main event here, which is giving an opponent's character minus 3,000 for the turn. Then if your opponent has a character with 5,000 or greater, draw a card. So actually not bad. I think this is pretty solid. The trigger being able to draw a card is really good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, minus 3,000 for two. And more than likely, they have a 5k uh, or greater in play. Just being able to draw a card allows you to cycle that as well. So... Pretty solid uh, card all around. And the trigger, you know, if it comes out of life, can replace itself if you don't really need that. Um, we've got the one cost event here that allows you to look for red hair pirates. Nah, we're not playing that. Red force, uh, if your leader has red hair pirates, give one of your opponents minus 1,000. Actually, not terrible for an activate main. Um, yet again, if you're running shanks, this is a common card. So probably finding one of these in your six packs is not very difficult uh it could be could be a choice i think that you know running shanks this allows you you know some some pretty neat uh pretty neat plays uh we do have audio here on play if your leader has the odyssey type set up to three of your dawn is active not going to get the on play there but opponents attack once per turn you can rest one of your dawn and then one of your leader or character gains plus two thousand for the battle really solid really really solid right there um just leaving one dawn up as well not very tricky to do at the end of your turn um it does require you in order for you to get that effect to be playing this on your 10 dawn turn but yet again another solid super rare and the stat line's amazing uh we've got usop here on play if you have two or more rested characters draw two cards then discard two really good stat line four or five with 1k counter and the on play is really solid as well so i i definitely would recommend running this card um having two or more rested characters is not very difficult either to establish um and it's a common card so i like the addition of usop in there uh crocodile another four five one k if your leader has odyssey this um uh, this character cannot be ko'd it if you have a vanilla 4-6, it's better than this because this essentially is a vanilla 4-5. <laughs> uh, 
So not really super useful there. Uh, we've got the 6-7 Sakazuki. If you have two or more rested characters in play, KO one of your five uh, opponent's five costs or lower. Actually really good. Um, the no counter power on it, though, is a little rough. So personally speaking, I... It depends. I could see myself playing better cards, um, but it's worth keeping in mind. We also have Sabo, 5-6 right here when attacking. If you have three or more rested characters in play, draw a card. Awesome card. <laughs> awesome card. I mean, granted, you would have to protect your board pretty substantially in order for you to um, be able to use this effect. But if you can gain hand size advantage as well as maintain a board, I mean, you're just there's no way you're losing that game so um stat line's good so even if you're not able to get the when attacking off it's still a really solid card we've got sanji on ko you can uh, put the top or bottom card of your life into your hand and then play up to a four cost or lower odyssey type or straw hat type from your trash into play as rested really good um it's gonna be sticky your opponent's not gonna want to deal with it there are a lot of Odyssey cards in green, but there are also some Straw Hat cards kind of sprinkled out uh, throughout this set. So you're going to find a couple of random ones here or there. Um, yeah, this is a great card. And if you trash, you know, your, some of your cards correctly by countering out with them, then you might be able to play them back with your opponent trying to deal with Sanji. And if they choose to just leave it, then you have a 6k swing every single turn, potentially 7 if you just attach a Dawn. Um, Chopper, setting up to one of your Odyssey type characters with a cost of four or less as active at the end of the turn. Uh, probably not, but you know, there's maybe a world where you just draw a bunch of Odyssey cards out of your packs and you know, I think Chopper could go pretty hard, but uh, we also have Law, uh, three, four, one K. Uh, you return one of your characters to your hand, play up to a three or, or lower Odyssey type character other than Law from your hand. Again, probably not but it, you know there's worlds where it can work depending on how many odyssey cards you end up drawing uh doflamingo blocker awesome already uh if you have to end of your turn if you have two or more rested characters in play you can set this character as active so now it becomes a blocker that can be aggressive um really really good card here all of the blockers in this set are just like super solid so highly recommend that um, now we also have the Don Quixote Rosinante blocker. When opponents attack, uh, you know, set this character as active. Yet again, can be aggressive with it. And when your opponent attacks, you just set it as active and now it can become the target of that attack. So love the card, super happy with that. Uh, we have Nico Robin on play. If you have two or more rested characters in play, until the end of your opponent's next turn, all of your characters with Odyssey or Straw Hat cannot be KO'd by effects. Eh, not really useful. Um, we have Perona as well to 2k counter. That's what we're looking for. 2k counter. But you can look at the top five, reveal a Thriller Barker or a Dracula Mihawk and put it in your hand. And then you discard one from your hand. So I don't really, we're never using the on play with this. We're using the, on, uh, excuse me, the 2k counter for sure. Uh, another 2k counter with ace uh, it's going to be on play if you have two or more rest characters in play rest up to one of your opponent's five costs could be could be useful in an on play i would say more than likely it's going to be used for 2k counter but it it has it has some promise uh, of being able to you know see some play at the towards the end of the game trying to go for game rest a blocker or something like that uh, we got monkey d luffy five costs uh, if you have two or more rested characters, choose up to one of your opponent's cost three or lower characters or up to one of your opponent's dawn and rest it. Um, yeah, I mean, five, six that line. Uh, the two rested characters, again, is kind of like a recurring theme with this Odyssey stuff. It's playable. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't go out of my way, though. I think I would probably be looking for better pieces, but it's playable. Uh, Lim is, I believe, the... The one super rare that I'm like, eh, it's not that great, but it could be useful. Um, but you look at the top five, uh, reveal up to one Odyssey type, put in your hand, then place the rest of the bottom of the deck. And at the end of your turn, if you have three or more rested characters, you can set Lim as active. Uh, <clears throat> it's a three five. It, you know, it could be it could be useful at the very beginning of the game. Um, if you pull enough Odyssey cards, it could also be solid. But yeah, it's like the one super rare that's. 
I could see myself not including it. Really just depends on what I get out of my packs. Uh, four six Rob Lucci, solid vanilla card. We've got the one cost event. I'm not even gonna read that. That's crazy. Uh, Gum Gum Quattro. If your leader has Odyssey type, um, yeah. So not gonna be useful since it's required for you know specific leader archetype. Um, three cost green event. If you have two or more rested characters in play, KO a four cost. Eh, probably not. Probably not. Um, really the threats that you're going to want to deal with are like five costs or higher. So probably not running this and uh, counter. If one of your up to one of your leader or characters gain plus 2000, if your leader has odyssey uh, and you have two or more rested set, two characters as active really solid, honestly, but your leader isn't going to be odyssey. So, but super solid counter card, truth be told. Uh, but now moving on to blue, we've got Alvida 561k on KO if your leader has cross guild. A lot of these are also going to be related to if your leader has cross guild. So I would just stay stick with a lot of the blockers as well as like the uh, 2k counters and relevant on play effects like the SR that we're going to get to. But Izo, when attacking, look at top five for Wano Kingdom or Whitebeard Pirates. I actually think this is okay. Uh, or no, no, that's right. It's red haired pirates. Never mind. Not okay. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I can find a lot of the red cards, but no, they're red haired pirates. So, yeah, Izo's, Izo's not really going to do it. Uh, Kabaji, if, you're, if you have a character buggy or moji in play, can't be KO'd. It's a 2K counter. That's what we want. So, uh, that's why it's in the deck. Uh, Crocodile, super solid card right here, though. Play up to one character with the cross guild type with a type including Baroque or or with a type including Baroque works and a cost of five or less from hand. Sorry, misread that for a second. Yeah, this is really good being able to cheat out another body um, if you do have it. If not, it's still a 7-7 seven, seven body on the board. Fantastic. Um, 1K counter as well. Can't beat it. Really good card. We have the 9-10 Odin here. Uh, yeah, it's actually... It's actually all right, you know, double attack with Odin towards the end of the game and the on KO draw two, then discard one. It's going to force your opponent to block. It's going to force them to take a double attack. Uh, yeah, it's a card that's going to stick around on the game for uh, stick around for the rest of the game. So pretty solid for a late game. I, I would definitely include like one of these in the deck. Dracul Mihawk. This card is so good for this event. Uh, six, seven blocker. With on play, draw two, then discard one from your hand. So it replaces itself, you cycle out dead cards, and it's a blocker, and this stat line's insane. Really good card. Yeah, if you get these, you want all the Mihawks in your six packs if possible. <laughs> uh, Jozu 461k, vanilla, solid. Uh, Nami, uh, 1k counter, looking at the top five for a blue event. I, I actually don't think you would play this but i don't remember exactly what the blue events are but yeah i don't think you i don't think we're playing that buggy do not play it i know it's got a good stat line but it's just going to get bottom decked immediately um you're not going to control five on the board more than likely so yeah don't play it uh three five marco though actually not bad uh you can um opponent's turn you trash one from your hand when this character would be ko'd by effects you can play it as rested from the trash uh this has moments where you know you might not use the effect, but it does have moments where you're like, ooh, I really could use that back. And they just use their final swing, blah, 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 yada, yada. Uh, so this could be really nice. I think the Phoenix ability on this is pretty solid. Uh, 2K counter Moji here. That's all we're looking for. 2K counter Moji. So we're just putting that in the deck for sure. Blocker Richie. This is a cheap blocker. We love those. Um, we want more of the two cost blockers because they're just really solid for events like this. We have the 5-7 Vanilla, also really good. Can't really complain about the Vanillas that much. <clears throat> Mr. 3 here, uh, no. No, you're not really, that's not really what you're trying to do with the deck. And yeah, so. Uh, cross Guild, look at top four, reveal a Cross Guild card, then return the rest of the bottom of the deck. We're not using that. Special Muggy Ball, uh, your opponent returns one character with a cost of six to the owner's hand. Um... Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. It, I think it was just the translation there was a little off. But, like, your opponent chooses one of the characters with a cost of six or less and returns. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it's good removal for, for two costs. I mean, that's super solid. So, we're definitely running that. 
Um, give up to one of your leaders or characters plus 3,000, then trash two from the top, uh, from your hand. Then trash the same number from the top of your deck. It's tough. I don't think we're running this. Um, it's actually a really good counter, but you're not trying to trash two from hand. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we're not using the stage here. Yep. Um, but now going into purple, the 4-6 Usopp, very solid. We'll definitely be running that. 5-5 uh, five, five killer here, Dawn minus one. Choose one leader with Kid Pirates and activate it. You could... This actually could be solid if you're running the green um, kid leader, but I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, Sanji, really solid. Super rare here, being able to rest a six or less uh, for Dawn minus one, and it gains rush. It's also a 1k counter. Really, really solid card to pick up here. Going to be helpful for uh, board removal and just pressuring life. Yeah. Uh, four six John Bart here is a one K counter, and I I always wondered why this card was four six with one K counter. I, am I missing something, it, or is this actually like a four five? Maybe I looked at the card wrong or something, but <clears throat> seems like four six is really absurd to have a one K counter and an effect as well. But on play, if your opponent has more Dawn cards, KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of three or less. It's really good. Yeah, super solid. I just don't know why. I don't. I think it's a four five. This might be a typo, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, seven nine. It's not going to get removed from the board. It's a great vanilla card. This card's just going to do work. So, um, yeah, if you can play these cards on curve, really, really solid. Uh, Tony Chopper here. Uh, returned one or more Dawn uh, from your Dawn deck. Set this character as active. Then this character gains blocker. So this is a phenomenal blocker card. Allows you to be aggressive as well. Kind of like that green Doe Flamingo. Love the Chopper card here. We also have Law. Allowing you to find Straw Hat or Heart pirate, uh, Pirates types. I don't think we're... Yet again, I don't think we're playing Searchers um, for this. But... If you get lucky and you end up drawing really crazy amount of purple cards or maybe a lot of green cards, this actually could be, yeah, this could be useful because there are a lot of green uh, straw hat cards in Odyssey as well. Uh, we have the Nami, return one or more attached to your rested dawns to a leader or a character. It's a 2k counter. That's why we're adding it. So we're keeping it for that. I don't think the on play is really going to be useful. Um, we've got our two cost blocker, Robin. Love it. Can't, can't complain about that at all um always cheap blockers are just really good for this format uh we have frankie this is a super super solid uh super <laughs> solid uh blocker for this format uh, format with the dom minus two um trashing one and then drawing two cards allows you to cycle through some great stat line as well uh so if you do pick up one of these definitely add it to the deck <clears throat> brooke is really good for this format right so when attacking return one or more of your dawn cards then give two of your opponent's characters minus 2000 power that is really good really really good we don't care about the dawn minus one part as much as we do about the minus 2000 to two characters part like this card can really like change the tide of the game completely so i do think that this is a very important card to put into the um into the deck building right there we also have Beppo, another 2k counter. I don't believe I see a world where you should play this just because there's not enough Dawn Minus cards, um, you know, only in purple for this effect to be relevant. So 2k counter in the hand. But if you were to able to get it on the board and have it activate, you know, the Dawn cards, uh, when a Dawn card is removed back to the Dawn deck, you, one of your leaders gains plus 1000 for the turn. 3-5 uh, kid here on play add the top card of your life to your hand if your leader has kid pirates add one dawn from your dawn deck as active it's actually a really solid card if you're running specifically the green kid leader but you know uh, also i i keep or i i kind of forgot about this during some of these speeches but like if you guys are playing the rainbow luffy format card is also very relevant to um you know that being a thing because that card is every archetype and every uh name so you know that's this card is fantastic you gain a resource and you ramp a dawn very good 
three cost Zoro. Um, I don't think this works. Uh, actually, no, it does. It does because it's one or you can return one or more. That's right. So you don't have to return more than one dawn. So you can just do a dawn minus and then gain a dawn back. Yeah. So this is actually just a really solid early game play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zoro's Zoro's pretty good. Uh, this is fantastic though. Gum Gum Lightning is basically your you know very like go to removal for this uh this format being able to ko a 6000 or lower character really really solid um yeah love that giant is if you get this card you're including it the card is phenomenal phenomenal defend one of your characters or your life and then on top of that draw two cards yes <laughs> yes uh jump rope is resting one of your opponent's five cost or lower characters and then draw a card honestly pretty solid replaces itself two cost to dawn minus two pretty solid uh thousand sunny though when one of your straw hat crew type <coughs> characters leaves play due to your opponent's effect set one dawn rested as uh probably not yeah probably not but i mean there's enough straw hats that if you if you're able to build a deck that's just filled to the brim with straw hats it could be relevant but i just think it's so useless after like turn four so it just feels like a waste of a slot in the deck personally uh four six vanilla here can't complain you know like i said with the previous ones very solid um a lot of the black cards are also relevant to your leader being black pirates uh black excuse me blackbeard pirates so it literally some of these have good stat lines like i would play van auger just because it has a good stat line and the on ko is draw one but you're more than likely never going to get the uh activate main off yet again unless you're playing like rainbow luffy um katarina though this is a great card this is such a great utility card for this format uh but only specifically if you are playing with the rainbow uh luffy effect because it allows you to either have double attack, banish, or blocker. Crazy good. If it's just a regular sealed format and, you know, not everyone's playing Rainbow, you know, not everyone has to play Rainbow Luffy, it's meh, because you're not going to get anything out of playing Blackbeard. So uh, we also have the Gecko Moria. Uh, play one character with the Thriller Bark, two or less from Trash Rested. We're not playing this. It doesn't have counter. Stat line's okay, but no on play effect, no counter. We're not playing it um obviously though we are playing this card this card is crazy uh, it can't be ko'd by effects and then uh, the four five one k is just amazing you might not get the plus 1000 you know obviously depending on what format you're playing but it's still a super solid card so can't really complain about that charlotte pudding if your opponent's hand has five or more in uh five or more cards in it your opponent trashes one card from their hand uh no no it's a 1k counter but we got the 2k counter shiryu here uh probably would never play it for the when attacking unless my hand's like the worst uh <laughs> but i and you know i'm keeping it for that 2k counter because i don't really care about the cycle of cards with this stronger is a 2k counter we're not going to use the activate main but uh yeah 2k counter for sure uh doc q i don't yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. You have to have Blackbeard Pirates leader. Yeah, so no, not going to be played. Um, Vasco shot, though. Two cost blocker. Definitely running it. Uh, Marshall D. Teach here. Rest this character if your hand has three or more fewer cards than your opponent's hand. Draw two cards, then discard one. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. It's a weird one. I don't think I would run it. But, you know, if there's, if I got to fill a couple slots, I could see myself having one of these. Yeah, it's a weird one, but I could see it. Oh, man, teach. Woo! <clears throat> this car is crazy. 10 cost blocker. I mean, you're already, you're winning right there. You don't even have to go any further. Uh, that's all you need. <laughs> so, yeah, really good stat line. Blocker, amazing. 3-5 um, vanilla, definitely add. Pink beard's going to be very good. Um, you know. Three fives, four sixes, always fantastic. Lafitte is a searcher. We don't really need that. <clears throat> Dang, I'm starting to lose my voice I'm talking too much. But we don't really need the Lafitte, so we can just get rid of that. We don't need the uh, 
the event there. This event, though, however, is very solid. So a two-cost counter event that nullifies the effects of one of your opponent's leader or characters and then gives them minus 4,000 power for the turn. Very good. Can negate a blocker, can negate, um, you know, special, special effects that, you know, maybe... Uh, I'm trying to think, like, what's a good example? Like an activate main that they're maybe thinking of using at the end of the turn or something like that, but <clears throat> Black Spiral... <coughs> can be very very good uh for defending yourself but also just getting rid of pis uh pesky effects um can't really use liberation because we have to have the blackbeard pirate type hachi Noso also very similar um blocker karasu here is going to be really good uh the trigger is only relevant for rainbow luffy but um yeah blocker solid three four stat line uh four or five kuzan place one of your opponents cost three or lower characters to the uh, top or bottom of their life and then if your opponent trashes one card from their hand not bad not bad they gain a life but you can get a little bit of a removal depending on what they have if they could have some tricky cards so um yeah kuzan could be okay uh 2k counter here for professor clover we've got the koala koala is really solid this is a good blocker um now, Dawn play is going to be a little hit or miss whether you'll be able to hit it or not, but maybe. Um, but just 6-6 six, six blocker, love that. The on play is you can add uh, the top or bottom of your life to your hand and then play a four cost or less revolutionary army type character from your hand and you get to draw a card. Super good. Super, super good. So, yeah. I would definitely recommend playing the Koala. Now, I think think you actually might just be able to take the life and draw a card and not have to play the revolutionary army thing because i think it's just these are yeah the, the cost is this so you just get both of these it's not then draw one card it's and so i think it's actually just really solid all around uh seven seven sabo though plays a revolutionary uh, army type character from your hand to your life face up then if you have two or more life <coughs> Put the top or bottom card of your life into your hand. Um, yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Good stat line and uh, potentially, you know, way to kind of like cycle out some life and stuff. 5-6 uh, Sanji though. And if your leader has Egghead, add the top of your um, top card from your deck to the top of your life. Then discard two cards. Hmm. I don't think the trigger would be very relevant, but decent stat line. Um, 2k counter here with Nico Ol uh, Olvia. Yep. And then give a Nico Robin power plus 3,000 for this turn. Probably not getting played, but plus 2,000 for sure. Uh, Nico Robin, 6 cost though. Very solid. If your opponent has 3 or more life cards, trash one of the top ones from your opponent's life. Crazy good. Crazy good. Yeah. That's solid. Uh, Bartholomew Kuma is a 2k counter 4-5. Um, I think this would just stay in your hand as a 2k. You have so many other options for 4-5, so you're not really going to play this to the board. Uh, we have Jaguar de Saul with the blocker. If your leader is Nico Robin, play this card. Um, but just a solid blocker with a good stat line. We'll take it. Uh, Pier, draw 2, then discard 2. Yeah, I actually could definitely see this um being ran in the deck because sometimes you just have a very bricky hand you want to find some other answers or some different pieces um yeah this this is actually a really nice cycle card yeah uh, very cheap as well uh five six brook i mean it's a straw hat so it goes back to some of those cards like the one cost law from purple that can potentially find straw hat cards um so uh maybe run for a little tech right there uh 3-4 Bello Betty with 1k on play. If you have two or less life, draw a card. Ah, I'd probably still keep it in my hand for the 1k personally in this format, but that's just me. 4-6 uh, Morley Vanilla. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Lindbergh, 3-4. 1k uh, if the total of you and your opponent's life is 5 or less. KO an opponent's cost with 2,000 or less. Eh, there's a world where that gets you around a blocker, but just doesn't feel like 3 Dawn is worth it you could probably just do some dawn management and make it yeah probably not yeah ice block partisan ko an opponent's character with a cost of three or less there aren't a ton of 
three cost or less cards that we've went over that are really worthwhile putting in the deck. So I don't really think something like this is going to be that useful other than maybe getting around blockers and like a few, there's like a few three cost cards in like green and purple, but I don't know. Um, yeah, one cost counter here, give an opponent's leader or character or give you, excuse me, give your leader or character plus 2000. Yeah fine with that yeah um trigger is also really solid too yeah being able to defend yourself uh it becomes a 2k counter for just leaving one dawn up yeah uh we're not going to use this yeah three cost look at the top five we're not using a little searcher gold roger yes yes you pull this card you are cooking <laughs> I don't know how you lose if you pull this card and are able to get it on the board. You just win. <laughs> so super solid uh, to pick up this secret rare and definitely, definitely worth keeping in mind. Um, we also have the Luffy, really solid. Replaces itself, gains rush, 10K straight to the face or straight to a character. Crazy good, crazy good. Yeah, so that's worth keeping in mind as well. But that brings us back to the start. Um, there are a couple more cards that I'm actually going to skip to here very quickly. Um, they're not here on this beautiful website. Shout out to Eggman Events. But uh, I'm going to show the SP cards and, you know, some of the other promos or like special cards that you can get in the set that might be worth uh, looking over. All right. And we also have a couple extra cards here. Uh, we have the six SPs that will be in uh, potential pulls in the set, but we also have some special wanted poster cards that are in the set. Uh, I didn't put three of them up here because they're three of them are cards that we had already talked about being the Shanks, Buggy, and Blackbeard. But there is the 10 cost Luffy that is not from this set. It is from OPO5. Um, definitely a relevant card to put in there. Uh, it's a potential way to close out the game. And yeah, I mean, all around, just like a really crazy, <laughs> really crazy card. Uh, you also have four cost Luchi. Uh, I don't think four cost Luchi's a really great idea. Um, I think it's a sick pull to get, but don't think it's a great idea for this deck. It's not really going to do you what you want with the on play. And you could just be running a four, six vanilla. So yeah. Um, eight cost dragon though. Crazy good. Crazy good. Highly recommend playing that card. Um, just because the on play effect is crazy. The rush, uh, it's just perfect uh you also have um boa hancock which is up to one of your opponent's characters other than luffy cannot attack till the end of the next turn then place a cost one or less to the bottom of the owner's deck that could the one or less could be relevant probably won't be but uh just being able to stop something from attack and establishing a six eight is really solid so uh boa is a really nice sp if you're able to pick that up zoro juro phenomenal sp if you're able to pick it up just being able to ramp some uh also get some attacks in and everything uh that's gonna be really really fire to to try and get a couple of those uh, or a couple of those one of those if you're lucky <laughs> but uh we also have the nami which is trashing a card with trigger from your hand and ko an opponent's uh character with a cost of five or less then if you have three or less in hand you can draw a card so might be able to replace itself um but also has 1k counter and can ko a five or less really solid card uh, Nami's definitely going to be, uh, you know, included in the deck if you're able to pick it up. And then Rosinante. I think Rosinante is just a solid stat line, but um, your active characters with five or less cannot be KO'd by effects. And if you if you rest it, you can play a green character uh, with a cost of five from your hand. There are some green characters uh, with a cost of five, but it's very niche to think that you're going to get that and a five cost green character in the it at the exact time uh that you need it so pretty niche card um i think it's a really dope pull to get but i don't know if i would include it personally i just think you know i don't know there's maybe some cards with counter or maybe some higher cards from the ex uh the set itself that i'd be more interested in but just wanted to include those because those are options as well and um yeah, I hope you guys found this video informative. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, if you want any tips on how to win those events, I would say your best bet is to include every single 2K that you draw out of your packs 
every single blocker and then just know when to take life uh, isn't as hard as you might think it is, right? Your first almost three life should be pretty free. Let's say you're playing Bonnie, right? <clears throat> Bonnie's a good example because you're able to defend yourself from one attack every turn. You can establish cards onto the board. Um, look at your life as a resource, not a I'm about to die, right? You're gonna you're gonna find blockers. You're gonna find the ability to you know defend yourself and everything. So really, just try and you know play around protecting your board and then protecting your life later, right? And because your life will be protected through blockers, through some events, uh, through you know counter in your hand, uh, through your ability to remove your opponent's board. So I wish you the best of luck. I hope everybody has a great second anniversary event, you know, depending on how many you signed up for events. Yeah. But uh, looking forward to get back to regular content creation very soon. And I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.